From the spring revival at Asbury University made national headlines. And now another college outreach is sweeping the country. It's called the Every Campus Movement. Well, the goal is to reach more than a thousand college campuses where there is no organized ministry. Heather Sells brings us a firsthand look at this movement in action. I just felt this calling that I was like, these people need to know Jesus. Students Ellie Yun and her sister Olivia have big plans for the Eastern Florida State Campus at Melbourne. After helping lead crew ministries at a nearby state school in Coco, they're now preparing to launch here in the fall. I just saw a need for it to happen at Melbourne and knowing how many students were there. I look at it going, hey, the harvest is ripe. We just need some workers out there. And I Scott Norwood, a local pastor and crew volunteer for both teams, exemplifies the tip of the spear for the Every Campus movement. The little known but powerful collaboration connects local churches and national collegiate ministries with campuses nationwide that have no gospel presence. Right now, there are more than 1,700, nearly 40 percent of colleges in the U.S. Norwood sees the church campus ministry partnership as a key element. It hasn't been one of those, well, I'm just going to I'm just going to use you to get in on this campus and crew hasn't been going. I'm just going to use you to get your resources. We've come together on this neutral ground and said we want to impact these students for Jesus Christ. To me, it's just such a picture of the body of Christ. Like this is what God has called us to. It's not about building crew's kingdom. It's about building God's kingdom. Every campus started in 2017 when crew, InterVarsity and other national student ministries began to formally work together and evaluate collegiate ministry. God took that sort of goodwill, trust, and relationship that had been built and said, we can do better than just kind of be nice to each other. Really, the driving question was, what could we do together that we could never do on our own? It really is just the dynamics of, of a we, that there's, there's less of us versus them, you know, building our brand. This year, every campus held its first national summit. Collegiate ministry leaders came from across the U.S. to strategize and pray. Meeting in Orlando, organizations brainstormed and planned for the fall. Their big new tool, the first ever National Collegiate Ministry Map. We've never had the data. We've never been able to see the picture until every campus pulled us together, built the trust, and we can look at the map together and recognize internal patterns, but actual collegiate ministry patterns. And so that information is powerful. Before, we didn't even really know, there were a lot of organizations, InterVarsity included, where we didn't even really know where we were on campuses, let alone where anyone else is. And what ends up happening then is we end up sort of doubling efforts. And so you end up with 20, 30, 40, 50 ministries on one school when a, a school across town has zero. The new map revealed hundreds of those schools with zero outreach they're typically smaller, such as community colleges, historically black colleges and universities, plus Hispanic-serving institutions. It became clear that a new approach was needed. If we continue doing what we're doing, we're going to be on the same 54 percent of campuses that are all traditional state schools. Community colleges are harder because you don't have the residential population. People come and go. If it's a school of a thousand students, there's less students to reach. So your groups will probably be smaller, won't look as big or flashy. You won't be able to have as much going on there. But you put those all together and you have a significant population of students that don't have an active ministry on those campuses. The good news, leaders say these students share a surprising spiritual appetite. They have no religious background. They haven't stepped foot in a church but 80 percent of them are spiritually open. There is a spiritual hunger out there among this generation, but it is completely and totally undirected. They're hungry for something. They don't know what, and they're open to anything. That hunger is already leading to a harvest, even among teenagers. Crew Vice President Mark Gauthier says its high school ministry traditionally has led one in 12 to Christ after a gospel presentation. Then last year, that number jumped to one in six. That is an un 
unbelievable demonstration of the openness of this generation. You're just seeing students come to Christ, not just like one or two, but we have some campuses where we're seeing 100, 175, 200 kids in a year come to Christ. There's no other question about it is that Jesus is the only way. And he brings so much joy to my life, and I want to share that with other people. Olivia and Ellie say they're looking forward to spending time this fall with classmates to share that joy. And with a small army known as Every Campus behind them, the Melbourne harvest may just be starting. Reporting in Florida, Heather Sells, CBN News. Well, it's wonderful to see the legacy of Bill Bright continuing on. The crew is, is, is working hard. And now they're joining together with every campus ministry to say, how do we make a difference? Let's be intentional. Let's find campuses where there is no outreach and let's provide it for them. So if you would like to learn more about the Every Campus Movement, all you have to do is go to CBNNews.com and you too can get involved in campus ministry.